who doesn't love a little bit of drama, right? All right, so it's come to my attention that a certain publication, a large publication that shall rename nameless, but I can almost guarantee you know of it, uh, put out an article that sort of eloquently bashes the keto diet. Like it doesn't do so in like a direct way. It does so in a very eloquently written way that just kind of afterwards you think, wow, that just totally undermined the ketogenic lifestyle. So here's a strong rebuttal because everyone just likes a little bit of drama and a little bit of rebuttal, especially when we on the keto side of the fence know that we're right because we know all the scientific literature. So let's go ahead and let's have a little fun with this. Hey, if you haven't already, please do hit that red subscribe button down there and then please hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications to know whenever I go live. And I do want to throw a quick mention out there. If you like grass-fed, grass-finished meat, after you finish this video, please go out and check out ButcherBox. They're down below in the description. And what it is, is it's a meat delivery service. So it makes it so you can get grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered to your house for less price than what you would generally pay at the grocery store. So we're talking high omega-3, high good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat. And also you get my discount on it, so it ends up being a lot cheaper than the grocery store at that rate. So please check them out down in the description after you watch this video. Okay, now I wanna say first and foremost, Sure, I might be a little bit biased because I lost 100 pounds utilizing the ketogenic diet and I have my son in my life because of the ketogenic diet and my wife has solved her autoimmune issues with the ketogenic diet. So sure, there's a little bit of bias, but my life has changed and I've done keto for going on 10 years now. Anyhow, the first thing I wanna address that this, that this article talked about was it compared Atkins to keto and it said, hey, Atkins was good because at least Atkins was just about low carb and encouraged increasing your carbohydrate intake over time. But the keto diet is so strict. The keto diet says you should never have this amount of carbs and you should never exceed this. And putting strict rules like that for people is just not a good thing to do because it's dangerous. It's dangerous and it's, what are you talking about? No, okay, let's take a look at at least one study. Okay, the Sato study from 1995. That study found that ketones are a more efficient fuel which means you're only going to get the effect of ketones if you do keep strict. Okay, the fact that keto is strict about the carbohydrate rule isn't just to be mean, it's because if you're not strict, then you just sit in the world of low carb without ever getting the benefit of the ketones. The benefit of the ketogenic diet isn't about just restricting carbs and the macronutrients at all. That's like first grade. The benefit all comes from the hormonal-like properties that come from the ketones that, quite frankly, if I could exaggerate, I, I don't even know if I, this is an exaggeration, has magical effects on the body. Okay? They also found with this 1995 study that they produce less toxic byproducts than any other fuel. So when you're burning ketones for fuel, it burns cleaner. Now what's really cool is they actually have hormone-like properties. Ketones don't just give your body energy. They bind to receptors, they change our DNA expression, they literally change our bodies from different forms, more so than just being a different energy source. It's Anyway, it just drives me crazy because ketones are powerful. It's not just about cutting carbs. Okay, the next thing it talks about is it sort of nonchalantly mentions that the keto diet's only popular because it's been you know, popularized by celebrities and big names. Um, yeah, that's not really the case. Uh, you're kind of forgetting the vast scientific literature that's out there. Okay, what about Forsyth, for example, in the journal Lipids in 2008? It found that keto was far more effective for weight loss than any other diet that was out there. And then we have the Verda two-year health study, which is a huge study, okay, and this is two years too, so pretty darn long, that found that keto is the only known effective and sustainable diet for reversing type 2 diabetes. Okay, so it's only been popularized because Halle Berry said that she has a lot of success with it. Love you, Halle Berry, but you're not the reason the keto diet's popular. It's popular because the science backs it up. Okay, and here's the one that really got me. It said the keto diet's great in theory, but there's no real long-term studies or not enough evidence to really make sure that we know it's safe. What? Okay, again, the Forsyth three-month study, the Verda two-year health study, that's already some very long evidence that we can look at. Okay, now there's more evidence supporting low-carb lifestyles, low-carb diets, than any other USDA 
pa dietary pattern combined. Okay, so that means there's more evidence with low carb and keto than all the other diets combined when it comes down to scientific literature. So in 2015, the USDA Dietary Guideline Committee took a look at this. Okay, 11 of the 15 of them supported a vegetarian and vegan diet, but they actually broke down overall like what most of the studies consisted of. There were two trials that supported a Mediterranean diet, which I support a Mediterranean diet. I think a Mediterranean diet's great. Okay, then there were eight that supported the DASH diet, okay, only one of which was over eight weeks. There were zero goose egg that supported a vegetarian diet. Oh, and just a casual 74 that supported a low carb diet with three of them over two years. And you're telling me that there's not enough scientific evidence? There's more supporting a low, why is this not getting out there? It's because it's getting stifled so much. Okay, then the last one that I want to touch on, and trust me, there is a lot more, but I want to be respectful of your time. It's bad because it encourages saturated fat intake. Are we seriously still reliving that? That is comparable to a 35-year-old man reliving middle school. Like, are we seriously still talking about that? Okay, this was inspired by the 1957 nonsense of Ansel Keys that was this grossly inaccurate epidemiological study that would barely even be considered a study. No randomized controlled studies, no placebo, nothing. Just epidemiological stuff that said, oh, well, these people tend to eat saturated fats and they died, so uh, saturated fats are bad. But what about this? The most rigorous study of the 20th century that looked at high intake of saturated fat versus low intake of saturated fat, okay, done at Minnesota University. Well, what they found at the end of this study, we will never know, because you know what they said? They said, quote, we were not pleased with the results, so they didn't get published. <laughs> so when they actually did do a more legit study on high intake of saturated fat versus low intake of saturated fat, the results weren't what they wanted, so they didn't get them published. Okay, so that's the largest scale one that we have, and it didn't even get published because of that. The point is, is saturated fat is not the problem, and I have many videos that break it all down, and if you want to see them, just ask for them in the comments and I'll reply with it. But the, the simple fact is, saturated fat isn't the issue, it's the inflammation that is resulting with the LDL and everything. It's a long, complicated thing. But saturated fats are important for our central nervous system, they're critical for our health, and there's not a solid link unless you want to look at epidemiological nonsense that was put together by someone that was very, very biased. So this is the first breakdown for this. I can dive deeper into more rebuttals if you want them, but I don't like to usually hone on the negative, but if you guys want to see it every now and then, I'm down. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.